I recently decided to change my audio setup to start using a shotgun microphone. So I bought the Audio-Technica ATR6550X. Now let's see if this budget shotgun microphone is worth the price. When you go to buy a budget piece of equipment, most of the time what you end up with is just a lower build quality version of the premium product. Most of the time it also has slightly worse functional quality, if you could say. But sometimes there's budget stuff that simply just surprise you with the quality that you get for the price. But never, never have I ever been this disappointed with a purchase that I made. Let me tell you why. So as you saw, here's the box itself. And when you go open it, you can see inside, here we have the microphone itself, a foam wind cover, doesn't really do much, but it's there, a mount for you to throw it on a boom arm or a mount to throw it on your camera and a single AA battery to power the mic itself. I'm not gonna go too deep into this because the mounts are terrible quality plastic, but I guess they would work in like an inside environment. I would not trust those things outside or anywhere where they can get hit by any single thing. And the foam cover doesn't really do much, but it's there. This is the part where I was carefully optimistic because we have a metal body, a simple triple stage power button in which it has off a wide setting, which is a cardioid polar pattern and a far setting, which is a super cardioid polar pattern. Besides that, the microphone has a hardwired integrated 3.5 millimeter cable. The cable would be about one meter in length, but they've coiled it up so hard that it's only usable to about half a meter, if that. This does mean that it will be pulling back really hard if you try to extend it further than where it is normally. So don't tam damage your plugs, I would say. All of this is going to build up to a wonderful conclusion. Let's get to the actual problems then, shall we? So I tried to integrate the microphone into this setup that I have right here, which means I have my light source over there, my boom arm over here, my camera on a tripod, and my Zoom H5 recorder right over there. The idea was to put it up there and have it shoot down on me. Now, when I finally got to hear the microphone, oh boy, I think the only way that I can convey how this microphone sounds is just by letting you hear it. If you are wearing headphones, uh, this is your warning. It might get a little rough. Okay, let's go. This is the Audio-Technica ATR6550X on the wide setting. Do you hear some uh, digital noise? Because I do. This is the Audio-Technica ATR6550X on the far setting. The microphone is right here. With the gain setting set to 5 on my Zoom H5. I can't go any lower because it just wouldn't hear me if I did. Do you hear the hiss? I do. Now this is the Audio-Technica ATR6550X after noise reduction post-processing on DaVinci Resolve. And this is the Audio-Technica ATR6550X after noise reduction in Audacity. As you can hear, neither of them can get rid of it. Not at least as well as I would want them to. Yeah, it's rough, isn't it? As you can hear, the wide setting on this microphone is completely unusable. It's just so full of digital interference. And there's nothing I could do to lower that. If the coil cable is close to the boom arm, it picks up interference. I don't exactly claim to know how this works, but there's no electricity even close to the arm itself, but it just, it picks up the interference from just being anywhere near the boom arm. That's kind of a weird thing considering it's supposed to be on a boom arm. And the far setting 
has such a high noise floor that it's just 90% hiss. If you bring the gain down any lower, you don't hear anything. And to add to that, the hiss is so bad that no, no noise reduction software can get rid of it. I tried Audacity, as you heard, and DaVinci Resolve, as you heard. Besides that, I also tried uh, Reaper plugins. None of them were able to get rid of it. Now, as if all of that wouldn't be enough, let me add a little bit of a cherry on top, shall I? The reason I classify this microphone as a budget option is because it's around 70 to 80 to 90 dollars or euros in most places. But when you consider its competition, it is very close. In some place, the same price, and in some place, just a few 10 or 20 dollars cheaper than the Rode video mic. If you look at that microphone, it has extremely stellar reviews and just the user experiences of it are everywhere and they are, they're all fantastic. Now, can you actually tell me that that wouldn't be the far superior product? I am extremely disappointed by this microphone. It seems that the shielding is so weak that the wireless signals that I have in this room are what is causing the digital interference. That's from troubleshooting myself because it's not like Audio-Technica's tech support ever answered me. In any case, I'm going to go return this now and get the road instead. And I recommend you do the same. Let me be very clear, I'm not bashing Audio-Technica here. Just this specific microphone. It could be that I have a defunct product. But once again, I don't know. There is no way for me to know unless I get it replaced. But why would I want to do that? Just to risk having to return the next one as well because this is a feature, not a, not a mistake not a defunct product. Once again, this could be answered if Audio-Technica ever answered me. In any case, I'm not going to bother with that process. I'm going to return this now and get the Rode video mic instead. Stay tuned for a follow-up video on that microphone. Hey guys, Future Lofi here. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a few things. I got the Rode video mic, which I'm using right now. Sounds great. But as you can see, my setup has changed from there to over here because there was a mysterious weird interference that you could definitely hear on the Audio Technica, but it also came up a little bit on the road. So I was looking around for a little bit and found this weird, mysterious, just point of interference. It was a certain point in two spots of the whole house. And one of them was in the middle of the last setup, the setup that I've been using that I built to shoot these videos. Now that kind of sucks because I had just gotten that setup to a perfect position, but it doesn't matter. Um, this is what we're gonna be going with from now on. This is actually my gaming setup that you might have seen on the background before. And um, yeah, so this is what we're gonna be using now. This as well will function as my proof that how good the Rode video mic works and how good it sounds. Personally, really happy with that. Kinda sucks about that setup, but that will become my product photography area now, I guess. But just wanted to give you a heads up the weird interference was not just something that the uh, Audio-Technica microphone uh, discovered, delivered, whatever. It was something more weird than that, but it was definitely a lot more pronounced on the Audio-Technica one. And this also does not remove the fact that the FAR setting had such a high noise floor that it was just unusable. Anyway. Just wanted to be transparent. Just wanted to let you guys know this. And with that, let's get back. Thanks for watching. If you found this video at all helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to show your support. And if you want to see that road video, have a great day, everyone. And I will see you next week.
Bye.